welcome back to my channel my name is Jessica if you haven't seen me before this is Green Fever SA where I just enjoy talking about plants and keeping you up to date with what I'm doing and I'm now trying to be a little bit more consistent I posted my first video last week in nine months and so now I am hoping that this will be a little bit more of a weekly thing if you haven't seen my last video go check it out I would really appreciate it it's a really quick little unboxing today I'm quite excited I want to give my variegated monstera a pole to sort of climb up which will be this little wooden pole i've got a bit of a bigger pot it has been growing in liquor as you can see it sits over there behind me i'll insert a little clip of that uh, properly but it sits over there and so i want to put it in a bigger pot get it growing up a bit of a pole i really would like uh, the, the leaf size to get bigger and I can tell it's at a point where it's probably the biggest it's going to get in the circumstances it has. Okay, so what I've done is I've actually, I don't know if you guys have seen, um, oh, I can't remember her name and I feel really embarrassed about it now, but um, Plant Life in the Tropics, uh, that is her YouTube uh, name, she does a lot of planks, uh, planks of wood that her plants grow up and they are growing phenomenally and really beautifully. I couldn't find a big enough pot so I put holes in this myself because it's obviously in liquor and then I actually have screwed the wood down in the middle because I do want it in the middle and it is going on one of my stands and it's like a three-legged it's a little bit it can be a little bit wonky it's never fallen over it just makes me a bit nervous so that's why I wanted to screw this down plus if anybody's worked with liquor first plant you're planting is very unstable um, it takes a little while for the roots to really start clinging onto everything and create Okay, so this is where I have been keeping my variegated monstera, and there is two cuttings in here. And yeah, it's really happy over here. It's just, yeah, I want to give it a nice big pole, just so that it can start upping the size of its leaves. As you can see, that was the the previous leaf, and this is the new one that's just unfurled, and it's you know not really sizing up. This is from the other cutting, um, so that's got a really nice leaf, and then this one didn't size up but it did get more venestrations and it's very very white so we've got a new leaf coming so i'm interested to see you can see that it does have some venestrations but it doesn't look big it's definitely time to to move it in summer i um, actually push it closer to the window this is a north facing window which in south africa is where we get most of our light from but in summer because of this wall and that wall over there you know a lot of the sun doesn't actually come in here it's too high whereas in winter i actually pull everything further back because we get the most beautiful sun in here in winter it's actually like incredible for growing i definitely now want to up the sky and see if i can't get some uh, some really nice big leaves on it as you can see it's in quite a small pot and it smells like there is actually a little bit of root rot, which happens with liquor. If you let all the water dry out, then the next time you water it, it, it does get a bit of root rot, which is not the greatest. You should not really be letting your liquor roots dry out at all, but sometimes it just happens, unfortunately. This is what he looks like. And we have two growth points. Um, this one over here and this one over here it's not actually two growth points it's two plants i bought this plant probably about a year and a half ago which i know is very small for a year and a half ago but i have propagated it three times so i cut off the middle leaf and i cut off the top cutting the middle one i'm giving to my sister and then i wanted two pieces to grow so obviously that you know slows everything down a little bit i mean it's a really beautiful variegated monstera it's got really good variegation on the stems and it's got some really nice leaves some very beautiful um you know sort of variegated leaves it's got a really healthy balance between white and green <laughs> until we get to this guy and then he's super white but we still have green and it's new leaf that's coming from there actually looks like it is got a little bit more green on so it still looks very white but it does look like it has a bit more green so hopefully we're okay there so what I'm going to do is I'm going to tip him out and then actually see how much oopsie, um, rot there actually is to work with give you guys a bit of a better view of this rather let's do that
And you can actually, I can feel that it is very root bound. As much as it looks a bit root bound, it definitely feels it. So just squish the sides of it. So I don't actually want to break the root ball up too much, but the way I had planted it previously, the two growth areas are, I don't know if you can see, the two growth areas are going different directions. So I kind of, I kind of need to, so that I can get both to be growing up the pole. And there actually isn't too much rot. Thankfully, so these uh, roots are quite quite healthy and fresh. I haven't found any that look too too rotten just yet. So I'm just gently pushing at it to see if I can just get any of the liquor to fall off on its own. I don't really want to pull it. don't really want to pull these two plants apart because their roots are so intertwined but I really have an option because they're growing the wrong way unless I try to train them to sort of grow the way I want them to which I think what I'm going to have to do because I don't really want to damage more root than I already have and I might be able to force them somewhat a little bit so that I can manipulate it a little. Okay. Okay, so when I planted this up the first time, I obviously wasn't expecting to be sort of replanting it for a while. I didn't want to break up the root ball too much, but I've now gone and had to. I can't even separate it yet, but as you can see, this one's growing this way and this one's growing that way. And I want to put it in here, but I want them both to be facing the same way and growing up the same way. So I need to loosen the root ball, unfortunately, which I really didn't want to, even if it's just enough. I'm just slowly like uh, wriggling it back and forth to see if there's any, any give, which without breaking any roots, which I'm not doing very well. I don't know if I should just try to train one side rather just to turn around because I don't really want to break roots. Even though monsteras do grow uh, really quick, and you know, if the roots are healthy and if it's a good spot, it'll be, um, it'll, it'll bounce back quickly. I just don't really want, I didn't really want to stop the growing process. I mean, I have a new leaf on the way. I didn't want to disturb that at all, but first time I planted this up obviously together I didn't do the best job I didn't pre-think this but anyway I think I might have wiggled it enough oh no that I can probably plant it like that inside the pot and then I can get them to, to both sort of merge their way around so I think that will work for now then what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop bunch of liquor in the bottom of this but first I'm going to show you the pot so this is the bigger pot that I'm going to be using just excuses my face is out it's fine but this is um, going to be the pot that the outer pot because obviously it's in liquor and in this will be the inner pot the very wobbly even though I have screwed it stick so I'm really hoping that it does actually cling onto this. I'm a bit worried about water and damaging this, but like at the other side, I feel like it's a pretty thick piece of branding. So surely it, it's not gonna happen anytime soon. Yeah, this is my, my new lecker that's been pre-boiled. It's actually still a little bit hot, so I'm gonna let it cool down a bit more, but I'm gonna put it in here first.
can see it's steaming still. So I'm gonna have to give this a little while before I put my plant anywhere near it, anywhere near it, because I recently just burnt my um, variegated syngonium. So we're not gonna be losing, it was different. I actually literally poured boiling water over it. It was a complete mistake, but the taps in our house get like super, super hot. Our geezer needs to actually be turned down. And what ended up happening is I was busy rinsing it off underneath the tap. And um, I put it down and lifted the tap up and was letting it do that and just rinse through, like flush it out. And I turned to the side to do something, but I think I picked up something here and I like moved it this way and I kind of smacked the, um, the tap this way, which is the hot side. And anyway, I poured boiling water over it before I even realized. I only saw a little bit of steam and then I realized. So now my beautiful variegated syngonium that was growing incredibly is down to two node cuttings because I literally burnt almost every single node. It's actually three node cuttings. So yeah, what I'm gonna go do is I'm gonna go get some water, some cold water, and I'm gonna pour it over this. Get this to cool down. Okay, so I've just gone and mixed up nutrient water. Uh, we've had so much rain at the moment, so I've been collecting a lot of rainwater. So this is just some rainwater with the pre-mixed nutrient water. And I'm gonna pour this in here. Just to cool it down a little. This plant in pot are gonna use so much water and nutrient water with the setup it's got now. But it's fine because it's going to need it. I'm going to show you. Okay, so you can see that it has the base over here. Um, and that's where, obviously, you pour your water into. The water reservoir. It's got the holes in the bottom of the pot that you saw. And then, obviously, the liquor is over here. Um, and then the pole in the middle. Because uh, I didn't want it, because it's going on that dodgy three-legged thing, I didn't want it to... Yeah, be uneven, be like heavier on one side. So I'd like the plant to grow up basically up the middle. I did not have bought enough liquor. And I went and bought new liquor for all of this. Um, oh, I wish I could have just separated these better. Okay. I'm trying to put these in. And I want one on one side and one on the other side, so that's where this problem is coming in. Of them being all tangled up together. I do want to see if I can't try to pull them apart a little more. Such a pity to do this when you've got such happy, healthy roots. But I'm being like a bit of a perfectionist in terms of the way I want it to look and being a bit stubborn. I'm trying to do it very carefully, but there's obviously going to be breakage. And I know that this is quite harsh, this is quite harsh, um, but it is going into quite a big pot. So I do want them to have space to grow and I don't want to shove it all onto one corner. Um, Thankfully, I'm very comfortable with monsteras and I do know that they grow very well, they do come back quite well, even though it's a variegated one. I don't know why people worry about the variegated version so much. The only difference, honestly, is that it grows a little bit slower and it costs quite a bit more. Um, but if you can look after a monstera, a normal monstera, you can look after a variegated monstera, honestly. You really, really, really can. Um, it just requires maybe a little bit more light. As well as knowing a little bit about if it's reverting and how to and reverted and how to um, how to manipulate it a little bit to make sure that you um, don't go full white and you don't go back to full green. So other than that, they're really simple. But anyway, so I did actually manage to split them up. So I'm gonna put this guy on the side. And then I'm going to tape him. I'm going to see if I can't tape it like that. So we've got one aerial root on the one side of the plank and the other aerial root on the other side. So I do have, I have 
pre-cut some of this velcro tape this stuff's awesome for this exact reason and then also i can choose where i want it to go before i put the lecker in because a lot of the time the lecker moves things around and i'm going to put this guy a little deeper in here and i'm going to pop him maybe over here See, I broke that aerial root. It's not helpful again. Well, I feel like I've already done so much damage to this plant. But we'll just have to wait for it to bounce back. As you can see, I literally broke this over here. Whoopsie. Um, so that's this aerial root is making it a bit tricky. Maybe I must also just have him going up this way oh yeah that's much better he actually fits there and then his next aerial roots should hopefully attach to the plant okay i haven't velcroed them very tight just because it's not necessary and you don't want to strangle your plants okay i'm going to fill the rest of him up with lecker and then i'll show you guys how he's sitting and how he's looking Okay, so I know that it was a bit of an overkill with um, the size of the pot, well it looks like it now, and the size of the post that I put in there, the piece of brand ring, but I promise it is definitely going to be worthwhile in the next few months. It is going to grow really nice and quickly, so I'm going to show you what he looks like now that he is all sorted. Okay, so this is what he looks like. That's him in his new home. Same, same spot, just a new pot. Um, a nice bigger one and he has this ridiculously long piece of brand ring. It will not look so ridiculous when the plant falls out. As you can see, the you know I've, I've changed the direction that the plant was growing before he was crawling sort of down and across. Um, and so now he's crawling up, hence why the leaves are sort of facing very far that way and very far that way. But it'll start to, to adjust and change. As you can see, there's a hell of a lot of liquor in here. Um, it's a very big pot and you can see the water at the bottom over there. We just covered all the roots up and you can see that's where I cut um, the middle part out for my sisters. And then this was the top one that I, I grew from it. I had thrips um, on two of my plants and I didn't see them on any of my other plants. But when it was literally the busiest time in my life at that point, I, I went and got gardener's gun and I just sprayed everything. I mean, I, I properly treated the two that had it, but then all of my plants, I just sprayed the crap out of it. A few of them, of the older leaves, are damaged. Like you can see that's from the gardener's gun. Um, not that. I think some of this is just um, some um, humidity, stress and all of those sort of things. But um, he actually, I think this was the only leaf that I actually properly sprayed with the gardener's gun. Um, and maybe this one. Um, I did try in that one um, a little bit. Um, you can see this is why you shouldn't uh, just spray with gardener's gun because I destroyed this leaf. Thankfully, I've got this leaf though, so I don't have to stress too much. But, but yeah, this is uh, his little setup. And he's going to get really nice and big, I'm hoping, really soon. I know that he's probably going to take a little bit of a setback, disturb the root system a hell of a lot. And yeah, I'll be interested to see how, how quickly this rots. I will um, eventually send you guys some updates, but I think he looks really cool. And I think he's going to be really happy over there, especially once he starts hopefully throwing out some bigger leaves and he should have the opportunity to now. Thank you guys for watching. I do appreciate it. If you do enjoy my content, please do consider subscribing, hit that like button or the notification bell so that you don't miss anything. I hope to see you guys in the next one.